Hey, what's up, guys? I'm doing some coding still. Got my helmet on here, obviously. So, look. Anyway, enough of the HTML coding for the website. I want to talk about today mixing. And so, I do mixes when I do lessons. And the beauty of my having this lesson program, when people want to do some mixes or understand how to use an MPC or any of the software acts or hardware, is that um, a lot of guys are not trying to mix and their tracks don't sound like they're actually fat enough in, in a sense and so i'm going to talk about that right now using the mpc software i will do another video also using the hardware but the software first right now which it's the same no matter what got a track right here this is gold dust i'm going to open this one up called uh hearts and it's js hearts open this up and so you're going to track inside of expansions that has you know a bunch of sounds and stuff obviously and some pretty long samples i noticed so when you're mixing or you want to mix or you want to learn how to mix the best thing to do is get these expansion packs open them up and start mixing them because then you get an idea of how stuff works and this will help you grow oh, so much when you actually try to mix stuff up because you take your own tracks then and you know what to do so here's what I normally do when I get one of these expansion packs. I want to practice mixing that expansion pack and do some tricks. So I'm, it's going to be very basic, <laughs> basic to start out with. So we obviously know this track. I'll play from the top. Uh, let's make this a little bit. There you go. I see everything. Eight bars. Stop that. Okay, it's eight bars of a track here. A little bit of uh, soul right there. And so what I want to do here, if I play from the beginning and I stop it, these sounds keep playing. I have to strike the stop button twice to stop the samples. Now, I don't want to keep doing that while I'm trying to mix, right? So the first thing to do when you get an expansion pack is like this, which most of them are, with these one long samples here and there, I want to stop them from playing. Only play when I press the play button. When I stop it, I want everything to stop at the same time. Simple to do. First of all, I want to recognize these samples here. They're right here. And there are like six of them, I believe. We got um, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Right? So I want to now go to my program. This is a drum program here. They're all part of the same program, which is this program right here. And so I want to go to pad number nine. Stop that. So I want to go here now. I'm first going to do is probably get rid of this uh, expanse. There you go. And I want to go down to here and move along here in the program at the bottom here. And I want to find play modes. Here we go. Pad play modes. Now, this is one shot. All of them are one shots. I'm going to turn this off. I want to go note on. Forget one shot. Note on totally. See what happens here, too? If I'm on one shot, you can see the envelope here and the amplitude for the AD, attack and decay. I go to note on, and now we got just the amp right here. Just dying off, dying off, dying off. Okay, great. Next, what I want to do is get the next sound. So I want to put my keyboard of my computer into a pad mode so that means key number or key w key will play this one good and i want to go i see this one i'm going to note on note on note on note on note on now what i just did i made sure every one of these sounds are note on so if i actually try to play them i hit them one time I remove my hand from that sound, it doesn't work with the pad, right? So, and what I'm doing here too is that the pad, the keys on your computer can mimic pads on an MPC or the pads you would see normally in your project. So, right here, you do that right here. I can go to pads, I hit again, like a keyboard, right again, it's actually computer keys, and back again, it's like pads. So, now what I want to do is sort of extend these things out, make sure we're fully hearing to the full idea of. The entire view and I'm gonna grab the end of this and extend this out all the way to the end just the end right there good and I'm gonna grab each one of them and do the same thing right there and I'll pull this out too as well I'm gonna get all six of them to be the same length the entire length of the song so it will play to the end and it's like holding it down until it comes back again this way if I press stop it's not holding it down anymore it's just gonna be stop 
And this way I can mix without having to stop the mix and hear these sounds just continually play on and on. It gets to be ridiculous. So this is pretty good. So I press play. I press stop. They stopped all together. That's perfect. That's what we want to do. So now what I want to do is go look at the mix and see how it looks in the mixer. So I've got a mixer here. Let's expand this out a little bit more. Okay, good. That's, that's it. That's a good expansion. But I want to see the mixer. And here's the mixer right here, right? So I've got two things going on. I got two windows, one for the actual track, one for the mixer. Here's my mixer right here, as you can see. And we have this open too as well. Let me turn this off. See, so I can see it this way. And I don't see anything but just these tracks here. Pull this down. There we go. I'm pulling it down somewhat. And now we see everything here. We've covered up the submix, the returns, and our master is still right here, right? Our master is where everything comes to our master output. And this is the output, or actually the fader for the drum program. You'll see the program icon right there. Here you see the pad icons, right? So I can come to here. Again. My pads are back. Right? So I want to hear these pads. So what I want to do now is sort of like get an idea of what's going on with these drum sounds. So I'm going to go over here, here, and here. I want to sort these sounds out. I like the drum sounds, actually. It's pretty good. I think maybe the snare could be a little darker. It's almost too high end, but I'll take that later. I'll take care of that later on. Right now, all I want to do is get some idea of what we have to work with. Okay. Kick and snare, the boom bat. Now I'll pull this up a little more right here. Good. Perfect. And so now I see those sounds coming out. Now, what I can do, too, I can send these sounds to someplace else. Now, on a mixing board, I have a return. And this is a return. It's four returns. Now, hear that? It's a weird sound. It's like a phasing. It's phasing. It's the same sound played twice again, you know. And so, that's a phasing sound. What we hear now, this sound is coming here to this return right here. I'll pull this down more. I don't want to have that loud at all. I want to make sure I keep my master fader here now. Watch this. I can pull this down here. I'm only going to hear the return now. I will not hear any of the program. So this is taking the sound and taking it out of here and sending some of that sound directly into the return. And we have four returns here. And we have one, two, three, four here. Obvious. And that sound will also be sent to the output of one and two, which is where our output is at for our main master fader. Now that's cool like that. I can bring the other sounds back like this, right? Okay, so I can come to here. And I'm gonna hear these sounds now. I get the good idea of what's going on here, all these sounds. Okay, now we're gonna do, hear back these other sounds, right? I'll press stop. Now what I want to do is make the drums dominant, pretty much in this mix. And to do that, I want to use my submixes here. And so let's talk about submixing. I'll come to here, I'll solo again, here and here and here. And what I want to do here is listen to these submix. I'm turn off this return here, and I want to send them to actually submix one for the bass drum. I'll come to here to submix one. I'll send it there. I want to send the snare drum to submix two. I go to submix two, I'll send it there. And of course, my hi hats will be over here, or my sort of hi hat sounds will be right there. And I'll play this back. So I can pull this out of here. See, we don't hear anything now. I can leave this solo. Won't make a difference. Because now I hear nothing. Nothing's sold because these sounds have been sent to a new spot. Before the program control, I can bring the program in now, watch this. that I still got the program going on what makes it so cool though is that I can control that sound and bring the drum still remain pumping and I get a bounce I want to have 
stop that. But that's kind of cool to have. It gives you the ability to get that boom back. You might want to get out of your tracks just to make sure you don't have to go back and turn this up, turn that up. And the overall, everything else will be someplace else right here in the overall fader output. Now, what I might do here too, that output is for the program. Now, I want to go to here. I want to hear this sound here. This sound here I like. I think this is sound number, this little three, it's another hi-hat. Okay, this. Okay, these two sounds here. They're coming in here. So I can do something like this. See that? I put this one over here a little bit to the right. This one to the left a little bit. Now they sound like they're there. Now this is what? This is like 23. I'll make it like a little bit more closer to the middle. I may want to go one a little bit closer here. Go to be about 10. That's good. This one's like 21, so I'm gonna get a little closer too. Might hear them right there now, back to, it's opened up. Okay, that's wider there, a little bit more wider. Those two sounds are bouncing off each other. I like this like that too, right? So now I'll bring the music back in here. Okay, I like that. Stop it. You get the idea. Now that sounds stronger than it did before. Now another thing to do here, let's go one more thing I want to do right here because we don't want to spend too much time here. Let you understand this and grasp this concept. I like to put something pretty much on this mixer output. Uh, and so I have the master right here and we just use the sub mix for stuff right now. And what I want to do is put some sort of effects in. I can actually go in here and I grab effects, you know, the usual thing. I'm not going to do that. Because you know something, Akai provides us with this, this MPC software. We can save effect racks, we can load effects racks, and they have factory presets for us. Let's see what the factory has for us. Let's see what they've been doing that factory there. And so here we have presets, so I can have bass, call for drums, this is kind of cool. And so I want to look at mastering actually, or an output for mastering in a sense. Or just to give me that kind of feel that I feel is going to be good. And I'm going to go to here and go to click on mastering here. And I've got this hip hop feel for the punchy hip hop. I got this master bus pop. I've got this punchy dance mixed or dance master. And we're not dancing, so I'm gonna go to him. I wanna do this one first because this is like a, I already looked at it already. I'm gonna waste your time going through a bunch of stuff. Plus, you can do your own thing. So that's not bad. So I wanna go back to here now to my mixing board, which is right there. And you'll see here it filled up right here. Now it gave us everything. So you can have your own racks that you've designed already and bring them back up, which makes it easier for you. And you can use what the factory has to get an idea of what they see that actually works better. Because these guys are using magnifying glasses to look at, is that better? How's that look, you know? How's that sound? You know, that's always good to have. So here in this case, I'll play it back. Whoa. <laughs> Everything's there like squashed about, right? So what's squashing? It's gonna be the compressor. There you go. Now one thing I want you to notice too, when this is on here, and I go like this. Let's erase this, look at this over here. Good. It sits down in here. I want to make sure I keep my fader we are about minus three. Yeah, about minus three, so it's good for me. I like that right there. And the reason why that is, I want to create headroom. I want to make sure there's enough room in here, this is headroom, where it's over the head, you know, it's in that room, but it's not pushed against the ceiling to get distortion. That's not good. So now I'll play it back again. Okay, good. So now I'll pull out the compressor. See, it's not going over three. And this is definitely louder than it was before. The drums are out front. Snare's there, the hi-hats are there. Everything else is in the background doing the thing. Not bad. I can always adjust the level here. I can bring this up more. Notice, the sound's not moving here. It's still three. I can pull this down a little bit. Maybe this down here. I can bring this up too. I raised the bass drum. I'm still at minus three.
stop that. And those are some basic ideas that will help you get a much stronger mix when you're mixing your music inside of your MPC software. Now this also works for the MPC One, MPC One Plus, MPC Live, Live Two, and the MPC X, MPC SE. So it works the same way. You can pull that same disc out, put it in your computer and do it so you can see it this way. But if you're scared of your computer, you don't want to do it, and you prefer to use your MPC, I will make a video for that too as well. So, but first, I want to do this one right now. So any questions, hit me up. And this is how I do my lessons actually for people. This is how I mix their tracks up for them too. They sort of love it. So look, also a sub probably for us at samplekings.com. But also, please subscribe. Help us out here. We're trying to keep ourselves alive. You know what I'm saying? Keep, keep us up here in a moment. As I said before too, I'm also building more stuff. You can buy gear on our site now. And of course, you get a free membership once you buy gear. And that means you get help automatically. We know that when you call a Kai, no one calls you back. When you call Rowan, no one calls you back. We know what's going on. We're not stupid. And so by doing this, it's going to be kind of dope. It'll help you out, and you'll have someone to support you with your brand new product. Brand new product. And if you got a problem with that product and don't like it, we'll talk about sending it back. All right? Get what you want. Keep what you want. Get rid of what you don't need. Any questions, hit me up in samplekins.com or in this video on YouTube, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. I'm gonna kick them down a little bit.